for years. The entertainment media complex has viciously attacked the fans who weren't receptive to the subversive direction Star Wars has taken under Disney ownership accusing them of being a vocal minority of toxic fans and overall horrible people and bigots. Recently, even the supposed silent majority of Disney Star Wars fans joined in on these attacks, in the process revealing themselves to not just be the minority, but the true toxic fans as well. Let's dive in. This story has mostly gone down in social media, so let's begin with a quick recap for those that haven't followed this in any level of detail. Upon release, The Acolyte, a series that Kathleen Kennedy and showrunner Leslie Hedlin, Harvey Weinstein's personal assistant, had gone out of their way to assure fans would be nothing like George Lucas' original Star Wars but instead continue Kennedy's deep dive into ideopolitically driven social justice Star Wars, where message comes first and minutia like story, compelling characters and cohesive narratives are but distant second priorities. So my character, you know, she's a, she's a powerful leader. She's a powerful leader. Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, in a very woman-centered world, which I, w I was very excited to kind of be in that, because I feel like Star Wars is, is very, like, patriarchal, so it was kind of cool to have, like, this sort of woman-centered figure. <laughs> so naturally, fans were pretty lukewarm on the Acolyte going in, because the powers that be had already let it be known that if you're a fan of the Star Wars that George Lucas created, it wasn't made for you. That's hardly a first when it comes to Kathleen Kennedy's Star Wars, so naturally, by the time the Acolyte did drop on Disney+, Plus, the majority of the once massive Star Wars fanbase had long since checked out. While the critics of the corporate entertainment media complex praised this too-big-to-fail DEI showcase from a major corporation every bit as much as all previous too-big-to-fail DEI showcases from other major corporations, the audience were significantly more lukewarm in their response. While some of that is because the fans have been chided from both the screen and off-camera for the better part of a decade now, most is due to the Acolyte simply not being up to par. Case in point, fans were initially poised against the Game of Thrones spin-off House of the Dragon as well, but that actually won everyone over with its tight and sharp writing, and it is in this department that the Acolyte failed so abysmally. Once you look beyond the gender, ethnicity, and sexual preferences of the cast and characters, the writing and story structure there leaves a lot to be desired, as has been pointed out not just by the same critics, but by virtually all independent reviews and pundits as well. Pointing this out, though, is what makes you part of the vocal, supposed minority of allegedly toxic fans who are fair game and accused of all kinds of horrible behavior by the entertainment media complex. According to the media, these toxic fans hurl all kinds of racist abuse at the cast and creators, which prompted the likes of Ewan McGregor to signal his virtue in an infamous car video and Amanda Stenberg to make a diss track aimed at the fans. What is interesting, though, is that across the publicly visible social media, there is hardly any of this rampant Rossicist abuse to be seen. I'm not saying there isn't anything, but if anyone has received the volumes and volumes of abuse that is being suggested, they must have done so in private, because there's no public trace of it. And you'd expect there would be, because there certainly is in the case of Star Wars Theory. Star Wars Theory is the perhaps biggest independent voice in Star Wars fandom, a superfan that Kathleen Kennedy's Lucasfilm, through sheer malice and stupidity, were able to drive away. Knowing the lore inside and out, he had no qualms about pointing out the flaws with the Acolyte, or that Wikipedia were making edits in real time, altering their written canon to fit the deviance from that which the Acolyte put on screen. Him merely pointing this out, however, led to Wikipedia staffers not feeling safe 
as they then accused Star Wars Theory of having sent his many fans to attack the site's employees. That, of course, is patently ridiculous, because he merely pointed out and documented that they were rewriting Wikipedia in real time to make canon fit with the new events, without telling anyone to do anything, which is a stark contrast with what Wikipedia were accusing him of doing. As such, he therefore suggested, in not so many words, that if they didn't change their communication to better suit reality, a defamation lawsuit might be on the table. That's when the supposed silent majority of very specifically Disney Star Wars fans decided to lash out, sending him no end of threats, overt abuse and outright hate, up to and including death threats. Which, unlike what is the case with, for instance, the cast of The Acolyte, there are receipts for, as this is, after all, public. Signaling their virtue though, for just like Disney Star Wars, its fans are a virtuous bunch. They decided to make a video letting the supposed masses and masses of modern audiences who really want to check out Disney Star Wars but who are afraid to do so because of this vocal minority of toxic fans, that it's safe to do so because there are many more of the virtuous Disney Star Wars fans. And here it is, the infamous There Are More Of Us video. Star Wars is for everyone. For everyone. For everyone. For everyone. For everyone. Star Wars is for everyone. Regardless of race. Regardless of religion. Regardless of gender. Or identity. Not every show, movie, comic book, collectible, or video game will be your favorite. And that's okay. Social media should be a place where we can share our love for the franchise. Without being attacked for what we enjoy. There is no room for bigotry. Misogyny. Or racism in the galaxy far, far away. That's why when you feel alone in your fandom. When someone attacks you for being who you are. Remember, there are more of us. 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 This video did not age well. In fact, it was taken down, because how dare the makers of it not include a black woman in it? They were called out for that, being told in no uncertain terms that allies like them are part of the problem. Because that's like pretending black women don't exist or something, so they profusely apologized and took the video down. Of course, they might have had to do that anyway, as one of those featured in it shortly afterwards had a full-on meltdown and admitted to having based their online identity on the name and likeness of another real individual, because the actual person behind the avatar was, well, a pretty tragic case, let's just leave it at that. I would say the video has bigger problems than that though, the most obvious being the suggestion that Star Wars somehow wasn't for everyone until Kathleen Kennedy came along and retooled it for modern audiences. The reality is that just like pretty much every other entertainment property ever made, Star Wars was always for everyone, even when it didn't go out of its way to virtue signal and exclude in its inclusion. Case in point, here's the audience for Return of the Jedi back in 1983. All I've got to say, the Jedi have returned. <laughs> we're just fanatics out here waiting on Return of the Jedi. Three years in the making, we're waiting for this. Some people don't idolize Darth Vader like I do. See, I want him to get Luke. And uh, I think that, uh, that, that Luke will destroy Darth Vader. I guess Darth Vader will die. I'm not sure. I hope he does, and I love his black. Unlike Disney Star Wars, there was no question about whether or not it was for everyone. Of course it was. That went without saying. But there's another problem with that video from the fans of Disney Star Wars. Unlike what they repeat as a cultish mantra, there aren't more of them. 
On the contrary, as the Disney Plus viewership and ever-failing merchandise sales clearly demonstrate, it is they who are the true vocal minority, and more than that, it is they who are the toxic fans. By contrast, the ones whom they would accuse of being toxic, and whom they would accuse of being the vocal minority, are in reality the exact opposite. They are what remains of the fan base of George Lucas' original Star Wars, and they have no need to signal their virtue, as they have no malice to hide. And as is evident from their following and general social media presence, there are way more of them. In fact, Raging Rhino made a response to that original video with a selection of these fans. Star Wars is for everyone. 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 Star Wars is for everyone. Regardless of race. Regardless of religion. Regardless of gender. Or mental illness. Unfortunately, Disney Star Wars. It's not for everyone. Every single Disney Star Wars show, movie, comic book, and video game isn't canon. But the expanded universe is. Always has been. Always will be. If you disagree, maybe Star Wars just isn't for you. Social media should be a place where we can share our love of the franchise. Without being called racist. Misogynistic. Bigots. There's no room for pronouns. Shippers. Dave Filoni or Harvey Weinstein's former personal assistant. In the galaxy far, far away. That's why. When you feel alone in your fandom. When someone attacks you for ripping on fake Disney Star Wars. Remember. 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 Just remember, there's way more of us. Way more. Way more of us. There's 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 way more of us. Way more of us. There's way more of us. There is way more of us. There's way more of us. There's way more of us. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments.